Hey guys, I'm Chad Hoover. Welcome to today's video where I'm going to show you how I'm mounting my Torquedo 1103 to my Bonafide SS127 and a new mount that I've worked with the folks at Catch to help develop. Fish on! That's a toe, brother. Golly! Alright guys, so for the last two years I've been running this um, rugged inline mount uh, from the folks at Innovative Sportsman. I really love a lot of the stuff that Trey does. Actually, I love everything that Trey does. My concerns about this mount were a couple of things. One, these four mounting holes right here mount directly into the inserts for the boat. And then there's no support back here on the back of the boat. And so when your motor weight and the torque of the motor, when it's under power, flexes the, the boat, all of the weight or all of the force is transferred to those inserts. And especially in the summertime when those boats get really hot and they get soft, I've had concerns about those inserts pulling out. The other thing that I really didn't like as much about this mount is that I have to put the power pole up, which gives me um, less usable pole. And let's face it, how many of us want to give up usable pole, right? It's going to give up, you know, four to five to six inches in some cases. And, but I did really like these little inserted guidelines in here. So overall, I'll continue to use this mount. But what I wanted to do is work with Catch to develop a mount that was a little more robust, especially since I'm going to be doing a lot more fishing with the motor this year, covering a lot more water, pushing this thing uh, a lot harder. So we started out by putting a mount on the boat that was just a rectangle that bolted directly into the, the screw holes. And then we thought by adding a strap in the back right here, which I'll show you in a second, would get rid of a lot of that flex. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull the power pole off and show you guys. Actually, let me show you one more thing before we start. One thing that we did play around with while we're there, and I'm going to experiment with it on the water, is this lift lever in a lot of cases I felt like was too long. So this little piece right here, we simply took it into the shop, rounded it out off and put a new hole in it because we were worried about clearance when you raise the power pole up and it running into that when you raise the height of the motor. Because one of the things that I'm going to experiment with this year is cutting this um, section down right here of the hydrofoil and sliding the whole thing down so I can run a little bit shallower. To accomplish that, we needed to cut this lift mechanism off and then reshape it. So that's one of the things that we wanted to accomplish, but we also used it with the standard lift mechanism. So for those of you that aren't so mechanically inclined, you had plenty of clearance right here to keep it from hitting your power pole. So let's pop this power pole off of here real quick and let me show you guys exactly how this design came about. <clears throat> so we started off with a basic rectangle. And then after experimenting a little bit, we kind of figured out that we needed to take advantage of this structure right here on the back of the boat. And we wanted to follow those lines to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So the first thing that we needed to accomplish is to set this spacing from where the power pole mounts into the inserts. Because one thing that you'll notice about this, or maybe not notice about this, is that we're actually using the existing inserts in the boat still. And we have holes in this mount that the hardware goes through so that we're taking advantage of that but we wanted to reinforce it. So what we had to do is set this up, set our spacing so that the power pole would rest on the plate, but you still had room for the pole to go through and you still had room for a little bit of fudge factor in there. Now, the one thing that I wanted is that you can't see on this and so we'll cut away to a non-installed photo or version of this is there are several holes here so you can move this mount back. Now, the one thing that Trey accomplished that was pretty cool is he actually recreated the Torquedo mounting configuration and then used a brake to bend this to make it super stiff and that's pretty slick and it's really innovative and again I love I still love that mount but what we wanted to do is make use of the existing Torquedo mount because if you buy the Torquedo you've already paid for this mount and we wanted to make it to where you could make use of that and we could reduce the cost of the basic mount so what we decided to do is to put quarter 20 inserts in here and actually put three or four sets of them so you've got a little bit of a ability to adjust the distance um, in and out. One thing looking back on it that I maybe should have considered doing is to mount the power pole forward, not necessarily use the inserts in the boat for the power pole, but use the inserts in the boat for the mount itself. And then I would have just had to use the power pole at an angled configuration. But then again, I was giving up some usable length and the whole purpose of getting it down was to get back that additional um, pole length. So what we settled on is after about the third or fourth iteration, we got the hole right, we got the spacing right. And then what we did, if you guys want to come up here and take a look at this, is this was the part that was, in my opinion, the most critical, is we made what's called a strap. And all this is is a spacer with holes in it, 
We took this plate off and we threw bolted this into the hull of the boat. What that does is that makes this mount more rigid, but more importantly, it takes the weight off of the inserts that are in the boat. So again, we're only using the inserts to hold the power pole plate on and to give it some additional rigidity. And then after that, we came behind the, um, the power pole mount and we used the existing rudder pin hole that's already in the boat and lined that up and got a bolt that's long enough, put a big washer on the bottom of it to keep it from pulling the nut up inside of the hole. And we took advantage of that hole that's there. Now, it's gonna be a little bit harder to see here, so we'll cut away to the uh, installation of it, but there's also a little spacer right here that goes in between the hole and the plate. So again, it gets rid of that flex that I was experiencing with the rugged inline mount. And pretty much, even if you put the standard Torquedo mount onto directly mounted onto the boat, you're still gonna have that space right there. So one of the things that we're gonna do is we're gonna offer this spacer as something that you can add to your rugged inline mount. So if you already got it and you've already spent the money, we're not gonna force you to buy this mount, but we will create a, a spacer, show you where to drill the hole, and then you can reinforce this mount as well to take some of the pressure off of those inserts. Again, if those inserts rip out because you've installed a motor on there, uh, there's a lot of cases where that's not covered under warranty because those inserts were designed specifically for a power pole or the motor to mount directly on there. They weren't designed to handle this additional leverage of having the motor displaced back uh, away from the boat. So we're affectionately referring to this mount right now as the arrowhead mount because it's shaped like a, an old school arrowhead. Um, and uh, again, I'm gonna get out on the water and do a little bit more of fine tuning uh, prototype testing, but this thing should be ready to hit the market in about three weeks to a month. And uh, I think it is the best mount on the market for still using your power pole getting your motor back a little bit to increase uh, efficiency. One of the things that people don't understand in a lot of cases about fishing kayaks is there are displacement holes. They're not designed to plane. So if you've ever seen a kayak angler going through the water, they're kind of sitting like this. The further you can get the motor back and the more you can get that head level, the more you can get the boat to run a little bit more efficiently. So I'm gonna be playing with this whole configuration here and actually raising this motor up and then again, changing the height to where I can get that perfect uh, dialed in and I'll be sharing that information with you guys but the only way to accomplish that is to experiment with the distance behind the boat the angle of the head because one of the things that happens and folks don't think about this for kayak fishing kayaks is they're designed as displacement holes not planing holes so what happens is, is when the motor sucks the back end down and it starts pushing it the head of the motor is running uphill and you never get past that breakover point where the boat breaks over we're also gonna play around with some experimentation with um, servos and stuff on here where we slot this and the mount can be trimmed fore and aft. That's coming a little further or a lot further down the road. But for now, what I wanted to accomplish is using the existing Torquedo mount to cut down on some of the weight and to cut down on some of the cost. I wanted to go with a robust enough plate that we could through bolt in the front and put a support pin in the back have a spacer on the back of the plate and a spacer in the front of the plate so we're not pulling the hull of the boat to it. And the team at Catch was amazing when it come to accomplishing that. And the only additional holes that we drilled in the boat is these two holes in the front that's gonna provide that additional support. Again, on all rotomolded plastic boats, when you press on them, you're gonna get some flex, but that flex is distributed across the entire structure of the boat in the back instead of all the pressure just being on the inserts. All right guys, so there you have it. That's the overview of the new Arrowhead mount for the Bonafide SS127 from the folks at Catch. Now, one thing I wanna point out is, let's say you're not interested in a power pole uh, for both the power pole and the motor. You can actually omit mounting the power pole you can move the bracket forward and you use these two mount holes for here and then these two will be the back two in the front so you can move your motor a little bit closer uh, if that works out better for you or if you like that installation again the idea behind this was to make this mount more secure to take the pressure off of the inserts and to get the motor a little bit further back while allowing you to still use the power pole and get back the full length of the pole so guys if you enjoy these type of videos do me a favor leave a comment in the comment section below and if you're even more interested in how I'm setting up my Bonafide SS127, click on the link in the description box below for the steering uh, system installation. And I'll see you guys in the next video.